There is an ancient Egyptian proverb that says, everything fears time, but time fears the pyramids. They are the last of the seven wonders of the ancient world to remain standing, and they are still the largest human constructions on earth, if indeed they were built by humanity. No one even knows where the word pyramid comes from. There are no roots for the word in any language on earth. We have been to the moon, but the pyramids remain a puzzle wrapped in an enigma hidden in timeless mystery. As an Egyptologist, the only mystery I can see about the pyramids is that people still consider them a mystery. Not one of the traditional concepts about the pyramids or the builders has been proven. They are simply monumental tombs built for Egyptian pharaohs. No dead king or any other mummified corpse has ever been found in the Great Pyramid. Everything else about this ancient wonder remains a mystery to traditional thinkers, which leads us to believe that a higher power was involved, whose purpose was much more significant than entombing a pharaoh. This is a very old and a very heated controversy. Even as Alexander the Great stood in awe before the pyramids, his generals were arguing about how they came to be. But whatever else they are, the pyramids are a reality, and realities can be measured and quantified. From the watchtowers of the Babylonian astrologers to the astrophysic labs of today, many, many scientists have long been agreed. The Great Pyramid of Khufu could not have been built with the quasi-Stone Age technology of 2900 BC. Yet, there it is, 42 stories high, covering an area of 10 football fields, an almost solid mass of 2,500,000 intricately fitted stone blocks weighing from two and one half to ten tons. Enough stone to build more than 35 empire state buildings. It's doubtful that ancient Egyptians had any knowledge of modern geology, and without this science, it's inconceivable that a structure this size could be built which would not crumble from lack of a proper foundation. Normally, it would just sink slowly into the ground. In modern construction, engineers find a settling rate of six inches in 100 years acceptable for office buildings. The U.S. Capitol, for example, has settled five inches during the past 200 years. In 5,000 years, the Great Pyramid, weighing 14 billion pounds, has settled less than one half inch. In modern construction, if the builders could maintain each side of the 756 foot wall within six inches of being perfectly straight, then it would be a tremendous accomplishment. But the Great Pyramid is only off of straight alignment by approximately one quarter of an inch. <laughs> That's totally impossible to duplicate in today's modern construction field. Originally the Giza pyramids were covered entirely with finely polished white limestone. On his first expedition to Egypt under Julius Caesar, Mark Antony said the Great Pyramid could be seen from a distance of 100 miles, shining in the sunlight like a precious jewel. The 115,000 outer casing stones, weighing up to 10 tons each, were removed in the 14th century to build the city of Cairo, leaving the pyramids at Giza as they are today. Now, these casing stones were fitted to tolerances of one two thousandth of an inch, so precise that a razor blade cannot be inserted between the joints. But it isn't just construction experts who find the pyramids mind-boggling. Astronomers and mathematicians also find the structure truly amazing. In building the Great Pyramid, architects utilize several highly advanced mathematical concepts not even discovered until thousands of years later. Now, how the architects came by these yet undiscovered mathematical concepts simply defies imagination. Just as the construction techniques are still baffling, so is the relationship of the Great Pyramid to the Earth and to the stars. The geographical orientation of the Great Pyramid of Giza is perhaps its single most amazing characteristic. Its sides run almost exactly from north to south and east to west. The deviation is within three arc minutes from true north. How could an ancient quasi-Stone Age culture have been able to determine true north? The Great Pyramid is evidence of a phenomenal knowledge of the science of astronomy. They could measure the day, the year, and the precession of the equinoxes. They knew that the Earth was a sphere, and they knew how to compute latitude and longitude accurately. 
But there have always been many investigators that think the pyramids transcend earthly measurements and that they are paranormal in nature. In the latter years of the 19th century, pyramidology came into being. This is a study based on the theory that the Great Pyramid was a cosmic force collector, operating on principles similar to the electrostatic condensers in our modern electronics. This concept has drawn the interest of many scientists and pyramid theorists. There's a vortex of energy emanating from the apex of the pyramid which actually expands in diameter as it rises higher and higher into the heavens. A simple example of this emanating apex energy was first demonstrated by British inventor Sir W. Siemens. When he drank from the wine bottle he brought along, he experienced a slight shock as the bottle touched his lips. The electrical activity intrigued Siemens so much that he took a wet newspaper, wrapped it around the bottle, converting it into a crude electrical accumulator which most high school science students would recognize as a Leyden jar. Although we don't know why or how, the Great Pyramid seems to be an accumulator of energies. Schools have long taught as established fact that the Great Pyramid was the tomb of the Pharaoh Khufu. This theory is based on an alleged discovery of his royal cartouche, Khufu's name and seal in the so-called burial chamber. But this theory has been badly shaken by some recent and shocking discoveries. There is no hard evidence anywhere that the pyramids were ever intended to be burial tombs for the pharaoh kings. Although the standard archaeological argument is that these tomb chambers were robbed of their contents. The pyramid builders left Khufu's name in graffiti on huge blocks above the ceiling of the burial chamber. Graffiti that no one saw until 1837. Concerning the hieroglyphic graffiti, I discovered this to be a forgery done in May of 1837. I received a letter from a Mr. Allen in Pittsburgh. It was his great-grandfather who witnessed Mr. Hill going in with the red paint and brush to achieve the forgery. When the great-grandfather objected, he was fired from his job and banished from Giza. Examining a facsimile, it became obvious to me that it was a forgery because Mr. Hill misspelled the royal name. Instead of writing Khufu, he wrote Raufu, which would have been like taking the name of God in vain, something which would have never happened. With so many intriguing possibilities, does it still seem reasonable that the Giza complex is nothing more than a massive graveyard for royalty? In spite of the bizarre and science fictional theories about these pyramids at Giza, they were and are nothing more than funerary monuments built around 2600 BC. Giza is a funerary complex, nothing more, nothing less. There is a burial complex at Giza, but that hardly proves that Giza is only a burial complex. It would be much the same as considering the Cathedral of Notre Dame a burial complex because there's a graveyard beside it. The Sphinx was erected by Khafre, the builder of the second pyramid, and many Egyptologists believe the face bears a distinct resemblance to his own. Also attributing the Sphinx to the Pharaoh Khafre has become untenable. Recent archaeological and geological discoveries demonstrate that the Sphinx is at least 10,000 years old and maybe even older. Of the many misconceptions about the pyramids of Egypt, one that stands out is the mythical curse of the pharaohs. It grows out of the activities of opening the tombs, like Tutankhamun's in the Valley of the King, some 350 miles distant from the Great Pyramid Complex at Giza. The curse of the pharaoh's story begins in the 1920s when two Englishmen, Howard Carter and Lord Cardavon, discovered the tomb of Pharaoh Tutankhamun. Among the spectacular riches, Carter and Cardavon uncovered a tablet on which a dire curse had been written. Death will slay with his wings whoever disturbs the peace of Pharaoh. The warning did not make them nervous, but they were afraid their native assistants might panic and quit. They crossed out any mention of the tablet's discovery from their records and tossed it into the rubble. The whole incident might have been forgotten forever had not some three dozen scholars and others connected with the excavation died sudden and mysterious deaths. Cardavon and Carter were about to uncover the mummy itself when Lord Cardavon became deathly ill. Although suspecting an infection, doctors were uncertain of a diagnosis. 
He died before his son reached his bedside, and precisely at the moment of his death, an unexplainable power blackout occurred all over Cairo.